Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing really well and welcome back to my podcast, Life of an Entrepreneur. This week has been absolutely non-stop and it's going to be the same next week. I got back from Dublin yesterday and I was going to film this yesterday, but I was that shattered that I just thought, no, I'll wait till tomorrow. And obviously it's the run up to Christmas now, so I've got a lot of commissions to finish off. Things are just a lot at the minute, really. And I'm going to Poland on Saturday so I'm just trying to not cram everything in, but just make sure everything's organized and I can be as productive as I can before I go and kind of schedule everything. So this podcast I've not planned out at all. I've not got any notes whatsoever, which is probably the first one I've done like this, to be honest. So this morning I put a story on Instagram where you could leave your questions so I can do another like Q&A type episode. I feel like you really enjoyed the previous ones that I did and I like doing them as well because I don't know what you're going to ask so it's kind of like thinking on the spot a bit more but back to Dublin I actually really really enjoyed it it's such a nice city I've never been before I went with two of my uni friends one of which I've not seen for like over a year so it was nice to have a catch up we went around like all the bars where the temple bar is which is like the famous um bar in Dublin we did go in but it was absolutely jam-packed like you could not move so we walked round and then walked back out so at least we could say we went in but yeah I feel like all the bars though around there they've all got the live music it's like cobbled streets um it's just a really good vibe in Dublin I really enjoyed it and then the second day we went to the Guinness factory and Guinness is definitely not for me it, I've just I found it disgusting. Obviously, I've tried it before, but thought I'd try it again, you know, being at the Guinness factory. You got like a mini one and they told you how to taste it. And you went through all these different rooms where you could like smell it and learn about the history of Guinness and stuff. It was quite good, actually. Very visual. It was a lot bigger than I thought. Um, And then on the very top floor, it's like a 360 like sky bar so you can literally see all the views of Dublin and yeah tried a pint of Guinness and probably drunk about this much of it (laughs) like none at all it didn't go down very well so I will not be having it ever again it's disgusting and I don't know how people can have like Guinness after Guinness it's just it tastes like oh no it's just not for me anyway back to the questions I've had a few this morning um and obviously I'll answer any more that come through whilst I'm filming this episode all the questions I've got are quite random the first one is places you'd love to travel someday so the number one thing on my bucket list is obviously to go on a African safari I would absolutely love to do that I feel like you go somewhere like that that you've never been before you could go for a week but it'll be over like that so I'd rather go for like two weeks minimum and travel to different parts of it, visit all the national parks. I'd love to go to that little rhino and elephant orphanage that um, Shannon Mullen and Zoe Fitchett went to on their Kenya trip. I was actually going to go with them, but I've traveled quite a lot this year anyway, and the camping put me off. (laughs) I'm not, I don't do well with like insects at all, like bugs, spiders, anything like that is a no from me. So yeah, the camping put me off a bit, and it was quite last minute I was like oh should I go should I not but I thought I probably shouldn't because I've already been everywhere pretty much this year well not everywhere but like I've I've been on quite a few holidays this year so I thought I'll just save a bit for next year's traveling um I say that and I'm literally going to Poland on Saturday (laughs) but yeah African safari I'd love to do like all the game drives and I'm not one for heights either but I've seen the hot air balloons that like travel over the park they look insane I'd love to go to Australia but the spiders do put me off (laughs) again um but no it just it looks so nice my friend's partner's over there right now he's moved out there for a year and she's actually going to stay with him like all over Christmas so we keep saying like oh let us know what it's like it looks really good but I feel like anyone that goes to Australia they prefer it to here so they end up staying there and I don't really want that to happen but I would love to visit definitely I'd love to go to Italy I've literally not been anywhere in Italy so I'd love to go to like Rome Venice, Pisa, like all the touristy places. Um, Lake Garda, I'd love to go as well. Lake Como, they look like really pretty. Milan, like there's loads of places in Italy, isn't there? But I've just, I've never been to any. So definitely need to go to Italy at some point. Maybe next year, maybe not, we'll see. I'd love to go to like New York at Christmas time. I'd love to go to Dubai. My cousin lived out there for quite a while and it's just, he says it's completely different like style of life I feel like you can only go to like Spain and Greece so many times I mean I love them places but I feel like now I just want to explore a bit further and 
yeah, visit places like that that I've just never been before. There's probably loads of places that I've missed off. I'd look, I'd quite like to go to Iceland as well, actually. Um, but I've heard it's very expensive in Iceland. My friend went a few years ago and she said it was like extortionate prices, but well worth it. She went to the Blue Lagoon, I think, which is where like everyone goes. That like natural outdoor thermal bath. I'd quite like to go to Canada. I'd quite like to go to Singapore. There's just loads of places that I want to go basically, everywhere. The next question is, what's the hardest part of your artistic journey so far? So I feel like in terms of just running your own business, there's always ups and downs. There's, there's always times when you feel really in control of everything and really organized. And then there's times where you feel quite overwhelmed and everything's on top of you. So I think the hardest part is just trying to like stay on top of everything and stay consistent with everything. Consistency is absolutely key. So it's how you develop your drawing skills. It's how you grow on social media. It's how you get more commissions. Um, it's how you just develop every part of your business, like your website, everything. The more consistent you are with everything, the more you kind of naturally develop everything at the same time. I think a lot of you who listen to this podcast are like commissioned based pet portrait artists. If you're someone who takes on commissions like throughout the year, your books are always open. People can always inquire at whatever time. It's not like you open your books like every six months and then book in all your commissions and then close them again. If you're someone that, you know, gradually takes on more and more commissions and you're having like a few months where it's been a bit quieter, you've not had as much interest. Don't be disheartened because I feel like different parts of the year are busier than others. I find that over sort of summertime when everyone's on holiday, they quieten down a little bit and then sort of after summer, I get quite a lot in that are booking in for Christmas or for the, the next year. And then again, it quietens down as the new year starts. So bear that in mind, but also don't let it kind of knock your confidence because if you stay consistent, then you're gonna be getting more commissions and you're gonna be developing in so many other ways the following year. So if you just carry on doing what you're doing every single day, all that is gonna kind of accumulate and you're gonna be so further on like this time next year. So you've got to think of the the bigger picture and just, you know, little tasks every day do mount up. I think it is hard though to, to maintain that. So I'd probably say that's the hardest thing that I've found with my artistic journey so far, really. Off the top of my head, there's not really been one main thing as of yet. <laughs> I'm probably going to jinx it, aren't I, after saying this? I think as well, um, obviously I went into this during lockdown. I kind of went full time with this through lockdown but still at that very early stage, like straight after uni, I wasn't really earning enough for it to be a full-time wage. And I was kind of on the fence with, do I start applying for other jobs that are more secure and this and that, that I'm not really gonna enjoy as much as what I'm doing? Or do I throw myself at my pet portrait business and kind of think about all the different ways I could make money by doing other things from that? I guess that was quite a difficult time because everyone was like, oh, what are you gonna do now? Kind of thing after uni. And obviously I was doing that, but it, it to everyone else, it probably looked like more of a hobby, which I guess it kind of was at the time because I wasn't earning enough from it. But then they don't see like five years down the line where you could be doing a million other different things and pet portrait commissions actually take a back seat. So sticking with what I knew I enjoyed rather than being pressured by other people's questions of like, oh, what are you doing now? I'm glad that I kind of went down this route. But I guess that was quite a difficult time as well. The next question is, what's your favourite part of being an artist? I guess the most rewarding part is when you send the pictures over to the client and you get like the best reaction ever. That always makes you feel so good because you've spent, you know, so many hours perfecting a portrait, you know, bringing the pet to life and they really appreciate the time and the effort that you've put in. So getting that really positive reaction from them is always really good. And I guess that's also the same with being like an art, tutor as well on patreon like people that have you know put on pictures of the work from say three months ago compared to now and how much they've developed is just crazy and i'm obviously not going to take credit for that because that's their hard work and practice and development with their own drawing skills um, but the fact that i've had an impact on that with my tutorials and i've tried to help them one-on-one -on -one with you know picking out areas of improvement and you know pointing out where they can develop I think that's also equally, if not more rewarding than the pet portrait commissions. Whenever I sell an original piece of work, that's always like a big win because, you know, 
someone who's wanting to spend quite a lot for my artwork to be in their house like displayed on the wall is quite a cool thing. I also quite like going to private viewings. So my work's been part of two exhibitions this year. One was the Green and Stone Summer Exhibition and one was the Explorers Against Extinction Sketch for Survival exhibition, both in London. And I did both of them last year as well. And I just see it as like a bit of a networking thing in terms of meeting other artists. It gives you confidence, like talking about your work to someone else and you can listen to how other people speak about their work and you can see work in person and it's always nice to see you work in like a professional space as well in a gallery and I've got a few artists now that I speak to quite regularly that I literally met at private viewings so it's nice as a networking thing and I do enjoy that as well. So that brings me on to my next question which is tips on how to email a gallery. So I haven't ever been represented by a gallery. I did fine art at uni and kind of learn all about the gallery side of things. That's basically their only route to go down is the gallery side of things. There's loads of different types of galleries that offer different things. So I guess it depends on which one you're gonna go for. But typically a gallery would display your work amongst you know other artists that they're representing as well. If your artwork's sold, they would take a big chunk of commission, usually 50% or more, which is huge considering how much time and effort the artist has spent on a piece of work but their justification is that they're doing all the marketing and all the advertising for it so they're basically getting you the sale so you don't have to worry about doing all the advertising for yourself and stuff like that but I don't know if that's the best route to go down nowadays with how big social media is and how much exposure you can you can get on there I guess if you are really struggling to grow your social media that might be a really good route to go down the gallery route. And you can always try it. Like it's not like you're gonna be stuck there. Why not give it a go for a few years, see if it makes a difference to your sales. If not, maybe try and grow your own social media a little bit more and try kind of selling your work yourself. I think it depends on what kind of gallery you're trying to approach as to what approach you actually give them. Most of them will want to see your work in person, you know, as a portfolio or take some originals in so they can see it in the flesh. I was really interested at the start of this year to potentially be represented by a gallery that's about half an hour away from me. They're quite a small gallery, but they exhibit loads of wildlife artwork, which is perfect because that's literally what I'm doing. I actually spoke with the guy at Manchester Art Fair and then I sent him a message on Instagram so we could see all of my work on Instagram. And this is what I've spoken about in a few of my other episodes, like seeing your Instagram as an online portfolio, because if you're reaching out to galleries and, you know, whoever, they can always refer to your Instagram. It's just there straight away. So it's good to always take your time to make it look professional and put clean, you know, really good quality photos on there. But yeah, I reached out to them. They were interested in seeing my work, wanted me to go and like show them in person. But then I kind of thought about it for a bit too long and I thought I'll just try this year to kind of sell a few more by myself. The fact they take 50% puts me off a lot. I know that it gives me a bit more time in terms of, you know, I don't have to worry about the marketing or the advertising, but I do so much on social media anyway that it's kind of intertwined with all of that, like sharing originals and updating my website shop. It's just part of what I'm doing anyway. So I don't know. For now, I'm not going down the gallery route, but you never know. I might try it one year and get loads more sales from it. But in terms of profit, it might be the same as I've done this year because they're literally taking 50%. So it's kind of swings and roundabouts really when it comes to galleries, but I guess it would be quite cool to say that you're represented by a gallery and you know, you could go into a gallery and see all of your work there and they would handle all the sales. They kind of know more about that side of things and they'd know sort of who to put your work in front of. The next question is, what specific luminance pencils do you suggest for pet portraits as the sets are pricey? They definitely are pricey. The sets of polychromos and the sets of Caran d'Ache luminance pencils are quite expensive, especially the luminance. I have never actually bought a pencil set, polychromos or luminance. I've always just started off with a few. And then as I've gone on to draw different animals or different dog breeds, I've sort of ordered a few pencils here and there as to what I've needed for that drawing. And over the years, it's gradually just developed. So I've got loads of pencils here on my desk. I've got a drawer absolutely full of pencils um, and I've got loads of spares in the cupboards from my workshops. Also, workshops is something that I enjoy from the previous question. <laughs> Completely missed that out. Really nice to kind of teach people in person. But yeah, back to this question. 
the there's eight colors that I recommend when it comes to luminance pencils. Anyone that asks me for recommendations on my Patreon, if they're a beginner, I always recommend these eight pencils, which are the buff titanium, the silver gray, the pink white, the olive brown at 10%, the raw umber 10%, the sepia 10%, and the warm earth 40%. I can't believe I've just remembered that off the top of my head, but was that seven or was that eight? The French gray 30% as well, if I've not said that one, but they're the pencils that I use all the time. They're quite neutral, so you will literally use them in every single portrait for base layers or for blending. When you get stuck on a drawing and you're like, hmm, what color, should I, what color do I need? It's usually one of them. So they're the eight that I'd recommend buying. I absolutely love luminance pencils. They're so good for creating that smooth, fur texture. They work brilliantly with polychromos. They complement each other really well. They're actually a wax-based pencil, so they're quite soft, which makes them better for blending, whereas the polychromos are predominantly oil-based, so they stay sharper for longer. They're much better for detail, and the polychromos tend to have more vibrant colours compared with the luminance. But yeah, if you're really wanting to go down the coloured pencil wildlife artwork route, Definitely get those eight luminance pencils because they're just the best. And then the last question I've got is, isn't it an act of appreciation or an unwritten rule to credit the artist you're doing a tutorial from? Yeah, I kind of guess it is. It is that unwritten rule. It's kind of like giving respect to the artist who's created the tutorial that's helped you to create like a realistic drawing or whatever it is. So I definitely appreciate it when people from YouTube who have watched like my free tutorials or my Patreons who've worked through a tutorial on there and they've shared it on social media and they've given me credit in the caption. I think it's just kind of like a, a thank you for helping me to get to this point kind of thing. Um, especially when, you know, the artists have spent so, so long creating a tutorial, recording it, teaching it, editing it, uploading it and helping people one-on-one, -on -one, giving you tips throughout like sharing all of your knowledge. I think it is one of them things where you should really credit the artist kind of out of respect and just to say, you know, thank you, basically. And if someone else comes across their Instagram post and you're credited as the artist who's created the tutorial, um, you know, it might persuade them to go and give that tutorial a go or join your Patreon, like you just never know. So it's always good to credit the artist who's created the tutorial, definitely. So I think that's it in terms of questions, unless any more have just come through. I don't think they have. So yeah, I'm going to leave that there, I think, then for this episode. So I know it's been a bit of a all over the place episode. I've literally had no notes. I've just been thinking off the top of my head. So I hope it's been okay. But yeah, thank you so much for listening to my 30th episode of Life of an Entrepreneur. I can't believe I'm on 30 episodes. That's gone so quick but it's also been so much work but it's you know it makes it worth it getting the comments every week saying have you really enjoyed the episode or it's helped in some way so yeah keep them coming and any suggestions for future episodes do let me know by commenting below if you've been watching on youtube then give it a thumbs up and subscribe and if you've been listening on spotify or apple podcasts then it would be great if you could share it or leave a five star review but yeah thank you so much for listening i'll be back next week with a brand new episode and i hope you all have a lovely rest of your week